28 like, doors within uh, two years. Yes. Yeah. 28 doors in two years? In 2021, I had a little bit of a health scare. So I couldn't work for one and a half years. Coaching and mentorship is so important uh, in the process. With learning from, from you guys, we also um, acquire about 28 door of rental what? property. Yeah. In today's video, we're going to be talking with Rachel and T, and they have a whole whack of things going on. So there are a few things. They are developers, and they also purchase multifamily properties, and they bought roughly 28 units in two years. Hey, I'm Dave from Investor Mel and Dave, and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified because we release a video every single week. Mel and I are the proud founders of the Action Family Mentoring Program, and we've both been able to quit our full-time jobs due to our real estate portfolio, which is now purchased over 264 units in five different countries, Canada, US, Costa Rica, Mexico, and Dominican Republic. And make sure to stay right till the end because they give some really good tidbits on some communication mistakes they wish they could have changed. And then also some secret sauce for new investors on what they should do in the beginning. But enough about me, let's dive into today's episode. <laughs> So welcome to The Real Deal Show. I have with me Rachel and T. Guys, welcome to the show. So pumped to have you guys here. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, very excited to be here. Yeah, that's awesome. So today's going to be an awesome episode um, for all the listeners and all the viewers, depending if you're if you're watching or, or, or viewing. But guys, please tell them a little bit about yourself so they have a better idea as to, you know, where you guys are located, a little bit about yourselves. But yeah, tell us, uh, tell the audience who you guys are. Absolutely. We are located in Vancouver, Canada, beautiful Vancouver and beautiful British Columbia. Just a little bit of background about us right, and about the real estate investment and journey. We uh, migrated to Vancouver to Canada in 1999. We went to UBC engineering program together. That's where I met my boss. Uh, so, um, so we, uh, we, you know, we, we went to school together. I, I, I rented the room just nearby the university and met this wonderful uh, couple that rented the place for me to stay. It's a, a, a small room in the basement that they shared the kitchen and uh, uh, other things with other, you know, students back then. And but we had a very good connection with with the couple. So, you know, during the time after I graduated from engineering school, we decided to partner together to buy a single home, single family property in New Westminster. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I moved there while I was working. And uh, a couple of years later, uh, when Rachel actually, she, she went back to medical school. And a couple of years later, I, um, that property I made a little bit of equity in that. You know, I back then when when I, I I bought that property with her, I had no idea about partnership, about you know real estate investment. But I knew that it was something right to do. I love investment, right? And I, I believe in real estate investment that could go our uh, wealth. So we did this. We sold the property. We made a little bit of money from that. You know, selling. You know, back in 2006, then when Rachel was in the medical school, we got the uh, approved for life credit for her medical school program uh, from the bank. Right, that we, you know, we were thinking, oh, I have a little bit of money that we sold from the property. She has an LOC from the bank approved. We were think, looking at buying another property in Kisano, and we used that money to buy it. And with the idea, you know, I, I would move that to the new property that we bought. Again, we, we had no idea about house hack, the, the, the burr method and so on. But the house that we bought is, is an old house and we figured out, okay, we would just renovate it. I would uh, move there to, uh, to live in there and rent part of the house. And we, we figured, you know, rent the, the upper unit could get us to help uh, the rental income to help the to cover the mortgage, right? Um, again, there's no no idea of the investment the method, 
So we 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 use that money to cover the mortgage. Uh, I lived there for a number of years until roughly uh, a few years later, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, the house has grown significantly in in terms of the equity, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you know the Vancouver market, you know, in the past 20 years, the value of the house, um, I think, has gone um, significantly for um, almost sometimes four times, five times. So um, by 2012, yeah, I mean, we building up equity. Yes, that's a good start for us to, to, to get that seeded fund. Uh, for us to you know jump into, we decided in 2012 we decided to take on our first development project. So we bought a, a property in East Vancouver to develop the duplex first duplex that we did, and it took us roughly a year to from start from the construction to finish it. Uh, and you know it, we we used the pretty much the LOC like credit, use credit cards and so on, pretty much from so-called other people money to help us develop the project right, and build the project and you know within the first week that we finished that project we sold it in the first week wow yeah and in fact the back unit as soon as we do have the first day of open house we got the offer right on wow. in that night that was amazing that was very exciting for us and that, that built us in terms of confidence in the, what we are doing. And we made pretty good money from, from that, that project that got us hooked up in, into the development, into the real estate investment uh, uh, and, and businesses. So more fast forward from then 2012, 2013 until now, uh, we've grown quite a lot in terms of uh, real, uh, real estate business and investment. You know, so far to date, we have completed uh, or, or built 10 homes right, since then. Yes. 10 homes? 10 homes. Holy uh, smokes. Yeah, and the, the, the value of the 20 ish million that we, we have completed so far. We have now seven projects active under development, five of which is almost in completion in maybe a couple of months. And you know we have some pre-sold in those uh, uh, active development. Wow! Yeah, it's very, that's very awesome. Good. Yeah, I know. I'm just looking at the numbers that I wrote down here, guys. That's awesome. So the property sold in the first week. You're excited. Got hooked, right? It gave you that taste of uh, of real estate, right? We've all had that that deal that does that to us. Once and then once you're hooked, you're hooked, right? You, you're yeah. like, yeah, do this. Yes, I, I, and I just went, wanted to go back again, you know, I, it's on that, at the beginning when we, we start on this journey, no no knowledge of, you know, partnership, other people, money, or a, a burr method, but we knew it's something that we do, we believe in, the, you know, in real estate investment. And that's kind of method that we use to put in together that help us create you know the the wealth that we we uh, are all confident in the real estate investment, right? And very proud. I I I think I wanted to say a little bit more is now you know since then 2012 that we started on our real estate development until now now we are uh, a licensed developer and registered as a licensed builder with BC Housing and we are a member of a Canadian uh, Home Asso Builder Association and also we are a qualified uh, net zero home builder. Oh cool. Yeah, for, for those uh, audience or listeners who probably might not or might not know um, uh, what the net zero homes is you know, Nessie Home is basically a house that produces uh, energy as much as it uses, right? That's in, in the, the, the... Natural. Yeah, in the natural or the simple term is, um, it, you know, for, for the homeowners, they, they pay little to no hydro bills, right? Um, it's a bill better than conventional new homes. Uh, standard homes. It has a better insulation. It uses high efficiency uh, equipment and heating equipment. You know whatever those 
things uh, 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 built more tightly. So, you know, they, they, they have a healthy air inside and of course reduce the grass, uh, greenhouse gas emission and footprint of the environment. So that's what we, we do for us as a developer and builder, we get incentives to build this kind of homes. Like through the government with grants and that types of things? That's one, but let's see, for example, in the city of Vancouver, we get to build a bigger than standard, you know, by law home. It's up to 19% in general. Say, let's say, you know, in, in, in Vancouver for standard lot, 33 foot by 122 feet. When you build a duplex here, uh, each duplex is allowed 15 to 1600 square feet, right? Uh, for us to build a, a net zero duplex on the standard lot, we could build up to 1900 square feet. Nice. That's substantial, actually, right? That's pretty good. Yeah. So you know, for again, as a developer and 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 builder, we are able to bring the unique, more unique products to the market. Like right? we have more flexibility on the design, and the cost itself, uh, in general term, not much different. I Total like cost it. is higher, yes, but you know, per square foot. It's it's because we get a bigger home, right? Uh, it's like it's not much different, not much significant different. Well, and, and the beauty is, is on the sale, right? On the flip side of it, on the sales side of it, now you've got something that's nineteen percent, and if someone's paying you per square footage, boom, right? That that that's amazing, guys. I love that. Yes. Um, it's almost it's because you know, that was going to be one of my questions. What pushed you into going towards net zero? But if you're saying, hey, I'm getting grants uh, and incentives from the government. And then the municipal government's actually allowing me to build bigger places, bigger square footage. To me, uh, that's a no-brainer. I like that. Yeah, and then uh, it, you know, it's always a good to be uh, an early adopter. Although it's a little bit more challenging, right? But you ahead of the game for everything. Also, yeah, like you said, not everyone can build a net zero house in Vancouver. It's only probably 10% to 15% of the builder is able to or certified to build net zero home. So work, we have a pretty kind of niche um, a market. I agree. We, we special on this. Yes, you know, to to be able to build net zero passive home, you have to be certified first in order to yeah. do this. That's cool, but it sounds like the certification is worth it for you guys. Good for you. You're part of the building association. You have the net zero. So like, how has that been? Like, what, how has that been, you know, fulfillment wise? How have you liked that experience? Tell me, tell us more about that, please. It's been very, very good so far. Uh, Dev, uh, we get to connect with the, the communities. We have a lot of support from them. They're helping us on the development and construction side, right? So, you know, products itself, uh, trades and so on. And one thing that I would just mention, like fast forward from the from the way we have grown our business and development so far. This year we enter into the you know a Canadian Home Builder Association uh, for BC chapter. We have every year we have this we call Georgie Award. It's it's a it's awards that given out to developers and builders for the project that they have done past year. And you know what? We won the project. Oh my so god. We won the award. It's been That's amazing. amazing for us. This is one of the things that we are very, very proud of there. And uh, we should have bring our uh, award yeah, bring... Uh, to show in the Oscar uh, of uh, Housing Award. What? Well, guys, first off, congratulations. That's amazing. I'm not surprised you won an award. You guys are crushing it. That's seriously, like, what category did you, if you guys can share, like, what category did you guys win? It's a category of a new build kitchen uh, under the new development uh, the, with the budget 20,000 or less. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was so surprised too. And I mean, we, we kind of, I was kind of hope a little bit, but not with the high expectation because, you know, there's a lot of uh, heavy lifters in the in the community. I was there in the, in the event car event and sure enough, our name was brought up. We were shortlisted. We knew that we were shortlisted, but you know, with the five, six shortlist, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, list and even, our name came up. Yeah, even being nominated, we're pretty excited because it's our first time to uh, enter, enter the, the award. award. Yes. And to be honest, like uh, 20 years ago, when we see people say, oh, this home uh, has won the Georgia Award, we always thought, oh, yeah, that would be so nice if we can live in this kind of home. But now we can build this kind of home. So it's a uh, it's uh, amazing and think about the people that saw your award and are thinking the same thing you did 20 years ago right you're inspiring people all over the place guys congratulations i'm not surprised uh that that's amazing good for you thank you so you said as of right now you're i think it was seven projects that you're currently working on is that what you said yes uh for the strata that we developed to sell we have seven ongoing like act five of which is very much in completion it's maybe a couple of months away uh, to finish another, oh sorry, four of which is getting close to finish, like another three is upcoming. Uh, we just started on the construction and then we'll probably put it out in the market um, in sometime next fall, okay. in 2025. Uh, and also to add to this, we are getting into the development of purpose-built rental as well. Nice. Yeah, we have one that under you know development process right now, building permitting and so on with the city. We um, developed forty nine uh, unit purpose rental in city of London. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, exciting. That's amazing. One and, and it, although you know just to tell you a little bit hurdle working with the city, but. <laughs> but uh it's been coming along so far and we i i think we we are seeing the end of the the how to say the the light of the end of the tunnel now for yeah. the, the for the permitting process so um we're looking at starting looking at on the financing side and uh you know the 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 people in press for to lie up on on the construction planning and so on so which I think we'll, we'll should be able to get started sometime early next year. Okay, so that's exciting. So yeah. I, I know you had a project you wanted to, to discuss today. Is is that the is that the project, guys, that you wanted to go over? Or was there something else you wanted to, to chat about? Yeah, yeah I wanna, actually, I, the one that I really wanted to, to share with the audience today is the uh, West uh, the the net zero duplex that we yes. about to finish in a couple of months, Dev, and that's very interesting. Um, you know, we that's we the as you know right now the 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 interest rate is is uncertain at the moment. The market is on the holding pattern, but we were able to pre pre sell one of the units. That tells something about the way we oppose the development the type of product that we put in right uh and this one the deal the way we we went and we started i think back a year and a half ago now um so we got a, a few investors that work with that on the project um we the 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 cost of con uh, development including the land purchase like okay the lovely like 4.1 million we put in with the you know investors on our side equity let's say this way as a developer development side right we put in roughly about 1.2 million okay and the rest is coming from the bank from on the construction you know loan construction loan so what was the total 4.1 again sorry t it's a development cost that includes the purchase of the land permitting design and construction okay. of the project and then 1.2 you raised from from lenders and then the other is financing right the the balance yeah the 1.2 raised from the investors that wanted to work with us uh and the rest is coming from the the commercial you know a construction loan from the right. institution banks yes okay and we have projected uh, we already pre-sold half of it we projected to sell gross revenue roughly about 5.7 to 5.8 million what would be your profit on that on something like that I you know the so cross profit as you see right the difference is about 1.6 million that's a cross profit with all things carrying costs and so on i think we projected around 1.3 million which is amazing right that, which that's is amazing. amazing 
that's why people wanted to get into the development <laughs> business well yeah no, i don't play them that, that you're, you're gonna inspire a lot of people to be like hey uh, i want to i want to start doing this development thing that's awesome yeah um Okay, so, that, so that's the project you got going on. I guess, what would the total timeline be on that? Just so someone who's listening and, and is thinking, you know what, I'm in BC, why don't I start doing development? Just for like a project like this, because everyone's going to hear one mil and be like, I'm in, I want to do it. Yes. So, yeah, what's, what's the timeline on something like this, guys? The construction itself would last about a year or so, like let's say 12 to 15 months. And the Permitting process and design process is roughly a year, depending on the type of uh, uh, permitting that we are looking for. Building permit itself only, it would take a little bit less. Uh, and But if we need to do a development permit, then it would take a bit longer, it's maybe another six months on top. So I'd say total, we are looking at, you know, two and a half to three years yeah. on the process. That's right. cool. Yeah, for some reason I thought it was longer in Vancouver. I, I thought I had heard like four years or something before, but two and a half to three is yeah, that, that's definitely feasible, right? That's awesome, especially if you're gonna yes. make. It used to be, you know, back in when we again we were early adopter on building the duplex back then in 2010, 2011. You know, back then when you uh, need you want to do develop a duplex, then you would need to go to a, a a development per, pro, uh, permitting process first that would take you 10 to 12 months and then building the permit again is around four to six seven months right so that's permit alone is almost two years mm. back then but now you know to build a standard bylaw um duplex there's no development permit anymore it's just a building yeah. permit so process in the city has improved a lot good more efficient in fact i love working with the city of vancouver <laughs> all those in the past but i love working <laughs> with them they're very they're very uh how to say and a lot of clarity coming out from the city um you know on the on the on the process. permitting process it's awesome and with the permit process like with you being net zero does it change things a lot does it make things quicker slower like what does that variable look like it's actually, you know, there's no written statement somewhere from, from the city that they say, okay, well, you know, expedite your process. But in fact, from my experience anyway, that we work with them on this uh, current uh, net zero project that I work with, there's a bit more flexibility from the city. I'd say more leniency on our little mistakes here and there. They, they, you know, it just uh, allow us to, to proceed. And in fact, it was faster for us. This one, we got the permit within four months. Wow. Yeah, and it was amazing. Also, just want to clarify, it's not a mistake. It's the uh, kind of relaxation <laughs> of yes. the bylaw. Oh, the, right. the city will not allow the, the problem to proceed, but they, they see we are kind of stretch their boundary in terms of design. Yeah. Yeah. So they will say, okay, that's okay with us. And, and I'm glad you clarified that, Rachel, because I knew what, okay, so I'm glad we talked about that because some investors might be like, well, what do you mean mistake? And I know that's not what T meant to say. I've been the same with my, I'm not a developer, but with my burp projects and that there's things, there's oversight sometimes where it's like, oh, how come the crew drywalled that? No, they needed to see that, you know, okay. Uh, we've had to take drywall off or, or, or undo work, right? And then you're spending good money or bad money after good. And sometimes they can be a little flexible and like, okay, you have pictures. Uh, and sometimes they're like, nope, take it off. I want to see it. So it's just, it's not a mistake. It's like, oh, right. Sometimes it's things are going so quickly and you got different projects. So I'm glad that Rachel, you, you, uh, Yes. And we all do it. Every every project. Okay, guys. Every project. Do you agree? Sometimes, like nothing ever goes absolutely perfect, right? Like that's just yeah. the Yes. It's. I've never had a perfect project ever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> on on this, uh, this you know the the on on the permitting side, like we they they gave us they relaxed us a little bit because our square footage is slightly bigger, larger than than what they would allow for even taking into account uh with the net zero uh uh incentives and we had a little slightly bigger but you know they said okay go ahead and do it that's awesome yeah oh, that's, that's great that's great and that's where partnerships are so important right when you build that rapport they you know your partners your key partners uh you know trust you and they know that you're you're doing the right thing and sometimes yeah so i, I it sounds like you guys have some good partnerships and you guys know what you're doing so i love it 
I love yeah. it. That's cool. I really like that project. Um, okay. So guys, I, I love everything you've said. I'm sure you're inspiring a lot of people. We're going to have a lot of people asking development questions after the, once this, uh, this episode airs. Um, I definitely want to ask you guys, and one, and the last thing will be uh, how to contact you. So the people will be able to get uh, in touch with you guys, but I want to go to our three question section. And this is where, uh, question number one is, I guess, what is your biggest mistake where you're like listeners, audience, oh, I, I wasted so much time, effort, money, whatever it is. And if you can avoid this a hundred percent do, you know, avoid it by, by doing such and such. So I guess what would, what would be your biggest mistake? Yeah. So, um, I think we made this uh, mistake early on, um, that, uh, one of our biggest mistake was, uh, I think miscommunication, uh, mm -hmm. when we tried to, uh, sell the uh, first property he owned in New Westminster with this Japanese couple. Um, I think this really kind of damaged the relationship. Um, and uh, really, um, it, it's not about the money. Um, it's about the long-term relationship that we have kind of uh, damaged. Um, and then we we don't um, cannot repair, um, really uh, reverse it again. Um, so for us, uh, we learned that uh, communication is so important. Uh, and we value relationship more than money and partnership uh, for investment. So uh, from learning from that, we decided like in the future, if we're going to partner with anybody or invest together, um, together, uh, the communication and alignment of our goal is uh, very key. So we want to, at the beginning of uh, the discussing um, about investment, we want to make sure that we understand their goal. Um, and they understand our goal to make sure our goal is uh, aligned together and then um, talk about what could be the potential issues and what will be the exit strategy and to make sure everybody understand and have uh, the same kind of expectation. Um, and then also along the way, if we uh, invest together, we want to make sure we uh, update them regularly. Uh, either verbally or with uh, kind of uh, email communication or reports. And, and audience, if you're you're thinking communication, that sounds so simple. When you're dealing with key partners, when you're dealing with raising private money or, or uh, anything like that, it, it, this is something that people think is an oversight and is going to be easy. It's not. Communication, Mel and I love doing is we love having the conversation and then also sending a follow-up, you know, in written, hey, just to recap what we said. And then if there's anything, you know, we hash it out right away. And it might sound, it might sound, I don't want to use the word silly, but unfortunately, guys, just like Mel and I, we've had some relationships sometimes because I thought, oh, that, that's a minute thing or they already know that. And and it's like, oh, in hindsight, I wish I just uh, told them. And so, yeah, definitely learn from, from Rachel and T. Uh, communication is key when you're dealing with, with strategic partners. So I love that. Um, okay. And then to someone who's just starting out. So we kind of did like the mistake for someone who's just starting out. What's a tidbit of advice that you would give them? Um, what do you say? We, we, we talk about like, talk about this a little bit. Um, so in the past few years, um, that, uh, maybe to share a little bit about, um, why we joined Mel and Dave as well. <laughs> So um, in 2021, I had a little bit of a health scare. So I couldn't work for one and a half years. And at that time, um, we really tried to think about like how we can make sure we have provide enough things for uh, our, our kids because our kids are still quite young. Um, and we have three uh, young kids under three at that time. So it's definitely a very uh, hectic uh, household. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that's how, how we decide, okay, we need to scale our business, even though we did well on our own with some uh, investor, but how are we going to uh, scale our business, right? So that's why we decided to um, join Mel and Dave because uh, we feel like uh, we really need to learn how to kind of use other people's money to grow the business together. Um, and that, that's first thing. So I think coaching and mentorship is so important uh, in the process. You not necessarily need to spend a lot of money, but uh, definitely you should talk to people who have done this before and learn from them. And a, a lot of uh, people we work with, they actually um, are very generous, right? They will share any tips they have and then they will help you along. 
Um, and then that, that will be our um, kind of suggestion for people who just starting out um, to definitely um, reach out for um, mentorship and coaching. And the next thing is about scaling the business. So for us to think about scaling the business, we feel um, because we, we actually um, also with your like with learning from from you guys, we also um, acquire about 28 door of rental what? property. Yeah. Within... Kept that for the end? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why we didn't even talk about it. We talked oh about the development gosh, last, that's but, amazing. Uh, we, we, we have grown our, you know, uh, pause and side of... <laughs> yeah, 28 side. doors within uh, two years. Yes. Yeah. 28 doors in two years? Maybe, let's say a few years. Two like, to three uh, years, yeah, during so COVID, got, really. It's yeah. all during wow. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, that's amazing too. Like, I love how you've got different streams of income within the real estate world, right? Yeah, we, yeah. we have a development that we, we start a fund, we sell to get the profit margin, and also we... We have a long-term host to get um, your Steady. cash flow, yeah. right? Uh, and of course, strategically with investments, with other people money and uh, uh, creative financing. So we've gone all through that. You know, it, it sounds very good in, in general. Of course, along the way, there's some issue that we work and we learn from it. And, and again, as Rachel mentioned, coaching or talking people with people who have done it before is the key. So you you cannot invent things on your own with this kind of you know in real estate. I say you know you just need to learn from the real life people experience first. That's awesome. Couldn't agree with you more, guys. Why reinvent the wheel? Learn from people who have made all the mistakes and can help you. Hundred uh, percent. That's why Mel and I still have four coaches and mentors even now. Uh, that's amazing, guys. I, I love the I love that. Now, okay, this is going to be the key question because people are going to be like. I love a lot of the things that you've said. This resonates with me. How can people find you? How can people reach out to you guys? Because you're going to inspire a whole whack of people with this uh, this real deal show today. How can they reach out to you? I think it's very easy to reach us to. Uh, we can we have Instagram. Look us up in Tectona Developments. Uh, Instagram we have. Uh, they can reach us, uh, us through the email as well info at tectona.ca and we'll put in the meeting in the in the, the below as well the the description and all that so wow that's pretty cool so three kids right uh health scare you guys have a million tens of millions of dollars in development 28 units you guys are still doing it the net zero lots and lots of stuff going on right uh so you guys are proof that hey just because you're you're busy doesn't mean you can't jam in real estate in there uh, uh on top of it so guys yeah. this was awesome you've you've given a lot of good value uh and thank you so much to the the audience for staying right till the end and watching this uh yeah rachel and t thanks for being on the real deal show guys thank you for having thank us you. yes thank you for having us wow what an awesome interview with those two that's amazing right three kids under the age of three 28 units in roughly two years they're making uh, millions of dollars with their project, the award that they won. Uh, Rachel and T, you guys are going to be such an inspiration to a lot of people. Thank you so much for being on The Real Deal Show. I can't wait to chat in a little bit because I want to get a, uh, an update from you guys in about six months to a year from now. Because I know you guys are not just going to stay where you're at, which is already amazing. I know you guys are going to keep that trajectory of, of up and up. So thank you so much for staying right to the end. And if you like this episode and you want more just like this, make sure to check out this one right here. I'm Dave and I'll see you there.